Chris, to some, this is an improbable story. Texas Tech playing for the national championship. When did you first tell your team you believed they could do it? This summer. Um, we knew our, all of our returners got better. We recruited well. We had tasted it last year, being so close to winning the Big 12, being so close in that Villanova game to making it to San Antonio. Um, so we had a little experience, but I mean, we liked our talent. Uh, everything would have to go right, but we knew we had a chance. You lost five of your top six scores. What, I mean, you said they'd gotten better, but you also had a lot of new pieces. When do you think they believed you? Um, I think each journey kind of has some validation points along the way. Um, but we, we, beat a, we beat a really good Nebraska team in our MTE. Um, we played Duke at Madison Square Garden. Didn't win the game, but we played with Duke. We competed. Coach K had some great things to say about our team afterwards. We kept showing those clips to the guys over and over again. And then ultimately, you know, when you compete for a Big 12 championship, you're good enough to win it all. So when you told them you thought they could be playing on Monday night, and you said it in the summer, you hadn't even won a game yet. What was the reaction from the guys? I think our uh, seniors led by Norrance, you know, kind of believed me. Um, now, we, were, we weren't saying it was probable, but we were saying it's possible. And, um, you know, you, you have a good season, you get to the tournament, and you got to win six games. And every game can be won. You know, you don't have to be the better team. you got to beat that team in a 40-minute game. So that's the way we've always approached it. I think competing in the Big 12 gives us that experience where, you know, every night's really, really difficult, but there's a way to win. On that subject, there haven't been many losses lately, but what do you think your team grew more from? The loss at Kansas, which as I understand it, sparked a meeting among some of the players, or the surprise loss in the Big 12 tournament against West Virginia, which I think is the only one in the last 15 games or so. I think the loss at Kansas uh, made us reflect back to who we are. Um, I'll never forget we were on the board the next morning, and what we're supposed to be is discipline and together, motion offense and shot selection, and commitment to defense, but in that Kansas game, we did neither of the three. Is that correct grammar? Yeah. Um, but Coach Self in Kansas was a big reason why. The West Virginia game, um, you know, this late, you're already in March. We're already in survive and advance mode, so we're watching survive and advance like we do every year with our team. Coach Valvano's story, we watch five minutes a day from the start of the Big 12 tournament all the way through the tournament. Now, this is the first year we had, we've had to go with another movie because we played so long. Uh, but now we're watching the UConn story about Coach Calhoun's championship right now. So what do you get from things like that and sharing them with your team? Uh, twofold. I mean, I, I love to teach the guys the history of college basketball, even though with the access, with the Internet, social media, a lot of these guys don't know, you know, the, the past to the game. I think that's so important. Um, so that, that's one fold. And two, it's just kind of a release, too. Everybody turns their phones off, we take a deep breath, and then we enjoy watching five to seven minutes of a movie each day together. It's like a release. I think it calms the guys, especially in this tournament where nerves can be at a premium. Obviously, it's just that seven minutes with no distractions. It gives the guys some peace. Everybody that I've run across, and with your, your journey it was six years ago, I think you're in Division Three, no scholarships, you have junior college background. You've made the joke you were drinking beers at the Final Four. You've been here before. Everybody says you haven't changed at all. How's that possible? Hey, that gives me goosebumps, you know, that people would say that because that's exactly what I hope. And, um, you know, on this deal, we win the game and I got like, you know, a thousand text messages. There's no way I can respond to all of them, but I'm just scared to death to see people that they think that I was trying to big time them. But um, it's just important to me to never forget where you come from. And I think that's true with all great players, too. And certainly this year's team, these guys have embraced that idea that uh, let's keep the chip on our shoulder. Let's try to continue to prove everybody wrong. Let's don't forget where we come from. Let's be us. How about the places you've been where you do have to put together a team quickly? Sometimes the roster turns over heavily. How has that helped you have such success so quickly and then duplicate it with, with new guys in this year? It's been a big part of it. And uh, I, I tell people, I hope it doesn't sound arrogant, but I do think that we're the best at coaching guys in one-year settings. And obviously Coach K and Coach Cal and those guys do it at a high level with the one and dones. But what I mean is we've been doing this for years. Rosters are always changing at the lower levels. Your teams change from year to year, sometimes even semester to semester. And so I think there's an art to coaching guys in short time frames. The key, I think, is trust and relationships and building them quickly. Uh, relationships don't just happen naturally. You know, I've always thought it's like a good parent-child or marriage. It isn't just going to happen. You've got to work at it. Um, and we try to do the same thing with our players, especially when we don't have much time with these one-year guys.
You said before the game against Michigan State that you don't out-tough Michigan State, though I would argue that you did. So what do you have to do against Virginia in terms of something you need to beat them at their own game if you're going to win the national championship? Yeah, I think it's, kind of, it's very similar. It's the, it's the mental toughness piece with, uh, with Virginia, and I don't think we can beat them, but we got to match them. What I mean by that is they play long, grind-out possessions. They don't make mistakes late in the shot clock. They don't beat themselves. In this tournament, they've won these two kind of one possession, kind of miracle type games, but you got to give them credit. That's the mental toughness. A lot of teams don't even give themselves a chance. We call it play it to the bone in our program. Um, but just so much respect for Virginia and how much mental toughness they have. It just, it just permeates out of the screen when you watch the games on TV and then seeing them play in person. Um, I watched the first few minutes of that game last night. And I guess that's not the thing coaches are supposed to do, but I, I wasn't doing nothing in the locker room, so I went out there and watched some of the game. But um, this is a team we have a lot of respect for. I think we'll have to play our best, toughest, most focused, most urgent game of the year to be successful. If you, can, if you can cut down those nets Monday night, what makes you believe that Texas Tech has staying power, that they can regularly compete at the highest level? Well, we've always said we want to build a program, not just to have a good team. Last year we were right there with the Elite Eight. Here we are a year later. We know the players are going to change because this is college basketball, but I think if our culture stays the same and our expectations stay the same and our fan base continues to support us, um, I think we can be relative in the Big 12. And certainly if you're one of the best teams in the Big 12, you can play on a big stage. I was talking to Coach Knight a couple of days ago, and he said he felt like that you're having your success because you've made defense paramount. Coaches love to say that. How do you get players to buy into that defense, play to the bone culture? Well, the first thing I think you got to recruit the guys that want to play defense. You know, I, we, we don't have a magic wand in Lubbock. Uh, we coach hard, but a lot of guys coach hard around the country. Um, so we try to recruit guys that want to play defense. And we try to show the guys that you got to guard to win. You look at this tournament, uh, the teams that advance are the teams that guard. Defense comes in different styles. Uh, but the teams that are committed to getting stops and not giving up easy baskets are a big part of the winning part of college basketball. What's your reaction when you hear people say that it's not going to be an aesthetically pleasing game with two great defenses out there? Uh, I disagree with that. This is college basketball. Uh, to me, you know, I really enjoyed the Pistons and Bulls just like I enjoyed the Lakers and the Celtics growing up. And I like the spread in football, but I also like it when Coach Saban pounds it you know, and beat somebody 21 to 14. So, you know, it's, it's uh, sports come in different fashions. And uh, I think this has a chance to be a great game. I know we have nothing but respect for Virginia. We're going to try to honor college basketball by playing our best game as well. If you walk up that ladder Monday night, who's the first person you'll think of or the first people you'll think of as you're climbing that ladder? My family, you know, my mom and dad that gave me a chance and my three daughters who have stuck with me through a lot. Um, you know, family first on this deal.